four minutes of stoppage time in the second half of a one-goal must-win game normally inspires hope in the losing team's fans and players that a late draw, or even winner, is possible against all odds. When the electronic number board lit up with a bright red 4 in the 90th minute of Peru's match against France on Thursday, that hope just wasn't there. Peru's national team didn't necessarily give up in those 240 seconds, but the players seemed to understand that their fate was pretty much sealed. Though France hadn't exactly played up to its star-studded potential, LeBlanc Caruja was unable to convert any of the their 10 shots for the team's first goal and potential match points of the tournament. The 1-0 last put Peru at the bottom of Group C and out of contention to advance to the knockout round. World Cup 2018, round of 16 qualifying scenarios for every team Unsurprisingly, the camera panned to the many crying faces of Peruvian fans, who were gutted to see their team bow out of the World Cup. But tears aren't anything new for Peruvians. A team that was once constantly competing in the knockout stages of the World Cup has been the pinnacle of frustration and defeat over the past three decades. I grew up seeing Peru making it to the World Cup without major problems, my dad said to me in a text. Since last qualifying for the 1982 tournament in Spain, it's been over three decades of disappointment and tragedy. The team's qualifying campaign for the 1986 World Cup in Mexico came up short after losing to our rivals Chile 5-2 in the Conmebol playoff. One year later, a plane carrying Peruvian club Alianza Lima crashed into the Pacific Ocean, which killed 43 of the 44 passengers aboard. I don't even remember where I was or what I was when I found out, my uncle, Carlos Castro, told me in a Facebook message. I just remember this nationwide sadness that affected everyone. It was a hard blow for everyone emotionally, Oscar Guerra, a Peruvian soccer fan and family friend, said the tragedy was something Peru was not equipped to recover from. Many of those players were supposed to be the new generation that took over for the old guard of the 1982 World Cup roster, he said. Those who were left simply didn't have the comparable talent to those kids and the transition wasn't smooth. In Peru's next seven qualification attempts, there was always something to give fans a reason to lose faith in the team. In the first qualification campaign after the crash, Peru lost all of their games and scored just two goals. The team almost qualified for the 1998 tournament, but a 4-0 loss to Chile in Santiago caused them to miss it on goal difference. In the 2002 preliminaries, Peru mustered just four wins in 18 games, and they weren't much better in 2006. The 2010 qualifying campaign was perhaps the first instance where Peru had the talent to easily qualify, but the team's most talented players chose to party instead of train before their biggest games. But even if there was a Peruvian who had no knowledge of the national team's recent history, cultural norms would indicate an expectation of failure during that particular span anyways. The 80s and 90s were an era marked by corruption, President Alberto Fujimori and terrorism, said Guerra. He added, it was a terrible time to be in the country. My generation was greatly affected by these problems, Guerra said. We had no faith, no trust, in anyone who represented the government because they gave us no reason to. The institutional failures of the national team seemed to mirror those in our government and that formed the pessimism that is a big part of my and your father's generation. My dad often talks about how the Fujimori era made him hate being Peruvian and returning home to Lima. It was the reason he emigrated from Peru to the United States in the first place. La Blanca wasn't worth celebrating because the country wasn't.
Yet the tears on the faces of Peruvians on Thursday did not appear to be a result of years of pent-up anguish. It was pride, for the record, a route for US, MX, ARG, etc. like every. The fact that I witnessed the losses in person made it more even more joyous and painful. OCL Football Thanks for coming along for the ride with me, Heart Peru. Esto muchachos nos han representado bien, Daniel Alarcon, at Daniel Alarcon, June 21st, 2018. The above tweet translates to, there's no score that diminishes how proud I feel to be Peruvian, nor result that would change the affection I have for this squad. These boys have represented us well, Ricardo Garica put together a team that might not have the superstar names, but certainly has spirit, something we've been demanding of the team for quite some time, said Guerra. The players are proud to put on their jerseys, they cry when they sing the anthem and even when they lose, they've shown their best efforts. It inspires us. Whether or not this generation of Peruvian players love to play for their country more than those after 1987 is up for debate. My dad believes it's worth noting that these young players have grown up seeing government officials work to move the country forward, rather than seeing what he saw in his youth. He'll say there's more passion and pride in the country than there has ever been, and it's hard to disagree. Chills. You can feel the emotion from the Peru World Cup team and their fans as they belt out the Peruvian national anthem before their match with Denmark. Picked out twitter.com slash cyproutbuild, Francisco Bernard Dominican Republic, at Francisco Forex, June 16, 2018. The support of goodwill even extends into the international community. Paulo Guerrero, Peru's all-time leading goal scorer, was allowed to play in the tournament only after the captains of Peru's World Cup opponents petitioned FIFA to temporarily lift his 14-month suspension for a failed drug test. More, Guerrero to give yet an act big hug for help battling Ban Guerra didn't know at the time of the interview just how right he would be about Peru's first two World Cup games with his losing efforts comment. Though both ended in 1-0 defeats, Peru was the more dominant side in each occasion, there were still moments that could have brought back haunting memories for the fans who have seen it all, of course. Christian Cueva, Peru's now. 8. Missed a penalty that would have put the team up 1-0 early against Denmark. Pedro Aquino's potential game-tying shot bounced right off the post against France. French keeper Hugo Lloris and Danish keeper Kasper Schmeichel each had the games of their lives. But Cueva was forgiven, Aquino was applauded and Lloris and Schmeichel were given the respect they deserved. The team just didn't have any good fortune in those games, but that's just how soccer goes, you can't worry about that, my uncle told me. There was seemingly no shaking the faith of the Peruvians at home or in Russia. Just look at the celebrations before a match that was meaningless to their team.